It's now time for oral questions. I recognize the Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. My first question is for the Premier. With Bill 5, the Premier has rewritten the rules for Toronto's municipal election, even though we are already halfway through the campaign. Why does the Premier think it is democratic to rip up election rules in the middle of a campaign? Premier. <laughs> through you, Mr. Speaker, we've been talking about this over and over again. The Leader of the Opposition the Leader of the Opposition just doesn't understand what the people want. The people want smaller government, they want lower taxes, they want lower hydro rates, they want to make sure that they have good paying jobs, and they want a City of Toronto that is functional, a City of Toronto that can build transit. The Scarborough subway, Mr. Speaker, has been switched eight times. The people of Scarborough are suffering. They're suffering because there's a two-tier transit system, one for one part of the city and then one for our friends out in Scarborough. I can tell my friends in Scarborough, subways are coming to Scarborough. We start the clock. Supplementary. Well, back to Bill 5, Speaker. Regardless of their politics, Toronto voters expect their election to follow the rules. The Premier can't just rip up the election rule book in the middle of a campaign because he wants a particular result. This isn't a PC nomination contest where the leader can get away with breaking his party rules so his favourite candidate wins. Will the Premier withdraw Bill 5 and allow the Toronto election to proceed under the rules that were in place when the campaign officially began? Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, the Council, without any consultation, went ahead and wanted to increase the number of politicians from 44 to 47 yes. with zero consultation from the people. Order on the opposition side. My friends, they want an efficient government. As I've said over and over again, we have 25 MPs, 25 MPPs, and we're going to have 25 councillors. Here, here. Supplementary. Well, that simply wasn't the case, Speaker, but the Premier and his friends looked high and low for a candidate in Peel Region to want to run against Patrick Brown. And when they didn't find the one he wanted, the Premier cancelled the election. Now, let's be honest about Bill 5. It's about an insecure and vindictive Premier looking to settle scores and control local democracy. Will the Premier just admit it and repeal Bill 5? Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, the people in the regions around the GTA and southern Ontario, they want an efficient government. They don't want layers and layers and layers. The mayor of Mississauga wrote numerous letters to the former premier that were totally ignored. The city of, Can the city of Mississauga Council voted, voted unanimously to make sure that they don't have another layer of government. People are Member sick and tired of politicians and layers of government for wasting their money, not being efficient. We're going to respect the taxpayers and put money back into their pocket instead of a bunch of politicians' pockets. Final supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is also for the Premier. Today, teachers, parents, students and other concerned groups will rally outside this building to protest the Premier's scrapping of the 2015 sex ed education curriculum. This follows another massive rally on July 21st, which was organized by high school students who do not want to start the school year with a sex ed curriculum that's older than they are. One organizer, 16-year-old Rain fisher Kwan, pointed out that the curriculum wasn't just for her but for the 284 boys the 284 boys on her instagram block list who need this curriculum to teach them the meaning of the word no will the premier listen to teachers to parents and to students like rain and keep the modern 2015 sex education curriculum in place premier Crystal, please take your seat Well, through you, Mr. Speaker, 
there was zero consultation, 1,668 people online after the curriculum was done. So the parents, the NDP, believe the parents should have no say at all. They feel we should ram this bill through <coughs> without any consultation whatsoever. But what the Leader of the Opposition is missing, Mr. Speaker, I'm not too sure if she read the Globe and Mail today, the number one issue in the province is our children's math scores. Yeah. Grade 6 students are failing math. <laughs> Grade 6 students are failing math. Mr. Speaker, we have some of the greatest teachers in the world right here in Ontario. They haven't been given the tools to even learn math themselves. One third, one third of teachers at Teachers College have failed grade six and grade seven math because they're only getting 36 hours of teaching compared to uh, teacher in Quebec. Thank you. Thank you. Stop the clock. Members will take their seats. Order. Start the clock. Supplementary. The Premier's backward move on sex ed will likely face a human rights challenge. This is because the Premier has put the interests of Tanya Granick Allen, Charles McVitie, and other radical social conservatives ahead of the LGBTQ kids and their families. Radical I'm booing that as well. I agree. That's a, that's a move that needs to be booed, Speaker. Why has the Premier bowed to radical conservatives like Charles McVitie, and what message does this send to LGBTQ plus kids and to the schoolyard bullies who want to harass and hurt them. Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, we're going to have the largest consultation right across yeah, yeah. this province. Yeah, yeah. In all 124 ridings, we're going to do something that the NDP don't believe in. We're going to consult with parents. We're going to consult with teachers. We're going to consult with experts. We're going to get the parents' opinion, and from there, that's where we're going to move forward. But what's more concerning? More concerning that they just want to ignore. They don't care about our kids, grade six math students that are failing. 50% of them are failing. They don't worry about those kids. They don't care. They don't care about the teachers. They don't worry that they're only getting 36 hours of teaching at Teachers College. We're going to give the teachers the tools they need to be better math teachers than what they have right now. Stop the clock. Order. Start the clock. Final supplementary. Well, Speaker, if they have been raped or bullied, math won't matter very much to them, will it? Again, again, this Premier's diatribe is not the case. It is unconscionable, unconscionable to erase the LGBTQ plus kids and their families as well as. Government side will come to order. Government side will come to order. Minister of Transportation will come to order. <laughs> Minister of Transportation will come to order. Apologize to the Leader of the Opposition. She'll put her question. Sent an online safety from the school curriculum just to appease his radical conservative allies. For King Kong, come to order. This house, apparently. Sex Ed saves oh, lives. Sex ed helps keep kids safe. The health and safety of children comes before the wishes of the Premier's radical friends, Remember or King, at least King it should, Speaker. Will the Premier listen to Ontario's parents, teachers, students, and healthcare professionals and say no to transphobia, homophobia, sexual violence, and ignorance, and make sure the LGBTQ plus kids and families, as well as consent and online safety, are included in the school curriculum? This Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, the NDP leader, leader of the opposition, some of the comments she just said were outrageous, but I'm going to ignore those outrageous comments. We're going to focus on what matters 
to parents. And what matters to parents is their kids start passing math. Yeah. That's what matters to parents. Get an education. Just, just the opposition will come to we, order. Again, we have the greatest teachers around. Parents care about the kids. Matter. But one third of them, one third of the teachers that are teaching our students are failing grade six and grade seven math. How can you teach our students when one third of the teachers are failing math? I can assure you, we will give them the tools. We will give them the hours they need in teachers' college to be able to teach our kids to make sure our grade six students are at the highest level in the country. Next question, leader of the opposition. Speaker, my, finally, my final question is, is my questions is actually to the Premier as well, but I can assure all of us in this chamber that we certainly do know who and what is outrageous around here. That's right. The Minister of Health and Long Term Care made some very confusing remarks. The Minister of Health and Long Term Care made some pretty confusing remarks yesterday. She agreed that overdose prevention sites save lives, but then she refused to open new sites and even said she might close down existing sites. Why would the Premier close down overdose prevention sites if his, ministers, uh, his, if his minister rather agrees that they save lives? Speaker. Minister of Social Services. Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you for question, and thank you to the Premier for the referral. Um, the, the Minister was clear yesterday, the Minister of Health, that this government is committed to fighting the opioid crisis that has been allowed to fester for too long in the province of Ontario, and we are going to get people that are struggling the help for their addictions that they need. We are reviewing the latest data, and she was very clear that the evident and current supervised injection sites and overdose prevention site models will be looked at. But in the coming weeks, we will also be speaking and consulting consulting with experts and reviewing reports from organizations to ensure people struggling with an addiction with the help, they get the help that they need it. This side of the House and that side of the House, by the way, there's so many of us here, have been very strong and committed to ensuring that we fight this opioid crisis and that we invest $3.9 billion into mental health, addictions and housing support in the province of Ontario. Members will take their seats. Start the clock. Supplementary. You don't fight an opioid crisis by cutting the mental health and addictions funding by $330 million a year. That's not how you fight an opioid addictions crisis. In fact, it is a public health emergency. Overdose prevention sites have already been reviewed and reviewed and reviewed. The overwhelming consensus of medical experts, medical experts, says that they save lives. Yesterday, the minister agreed that they save lives, but instead of opening more sites and saving more lives, she wants even more review. Will the premier just admit that the only purpose of this so-called review is to fabricate an excuse to shut down these life-saving overdose prevention sites? I'm going to ask the Leader of the Opposition to withdraw. I'll withdraw, Speaker. Response? Yeah, the question's been put. Minister. Thanks very much, Speaker. This member opposite knows that there's not been one person in this legislature in the past 12 years that's spoken more about the opioid crisis than this member, this minister right here. And that is a fact. There's not been one person that has called the previous administration to initiate a task force as much as this member has right here. And I will stand in my place and I will defend the Minister of Health for her compassionate commitment to this issue. We know, as members of this government, that we are going to continue to work with our experts. We are going to continue to work with organizations to make sure that we are rehabilitating people in the best possible way that we most, most certainly can. We are currently reviewing the latest data. They may not like that, but that's the case. We are looking at evidence-based models, and we are looking at supervised injection sites and overdose prevention site models. But let me be perfectly clear. When that member and her party suggest we're cutting mental health money, they're wrong. I ask the minister to withdraw. Thank you. The House will come to order. Next question.
Member for Scarborough Centre. Speaker, my question is to the stellar Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. people believes in standing up for the taxpayer by fixing government so that it works for them, unlike the NDP who believe in a socialist government that works for them and their friends. The people told us that they want a government that costs less and makes quick decisions that address the problems they face in their daily lives. The people of Scarborough Centre, for example, have faced transportation issues for years thanks to the shenanigans at City Hall. They have seen the Scarborough subway reality get pushed further Order and further on the back, but benches. the people of Scarborough Centre can finally rest assured that their voices will be heard and we are bringing them the much-needed Scarborough subway extension. Yeah. This is because we understand that a fundamental Question. part of democracy Question. is that everyone's vote should carry weight. Minister, can you explain how we're not only reducing the size and cost of Toronto Council, but we are making it more fair to voters across the GTA? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thank you, uh, thank you, Speaker, and I want to thank the uh, member for Scarborough Centre for the question and the kind words as well. Uh, the problem with uh, big government is that it only works for the politicians. The 47 ward system the NDP defends is wrong, Speaker. It costs more and it creates more dysfunction. But it also wasn't fair because large variances in ward population meant over one million Torontonians votes would count for less. Member for Timmins, One come to OMB order. member the who heard the appeal order. said, and I quote, come to order. such variances do not meet the conditions of effective representation. Speaker, members of this House can Here give to all Toronto residents the effective representation they deserve by supporting Bill 5. I again call on the opposition to Fine. support what they're doing. It's good for the City of Toronto. Thank you, Thank you, Minister. I would also like to see the opposition put the people ahead of politicians for once, but based on their behaviour and questions, I think I'm going to be disappointed for the next four years. To ensure Toronto has a fair election on October 22nd, all they have to do is support our legislation. I can't think of anything more anti-democratic than refusing to fix a system that is so obviously imbalanced. Yep. If we do not act now, not only will one million people's votes count for less on election day, but their voices will carry less weight in every council decision that is made from there on in. Can the minister explain why it is so imperative that Bill 5 pass in time for the upcoming election? Minister. Member for the question. Unlike the opposition, we refuse to let democracy take a backseat to keep a bunch of incumbent councillors on the payroll. We can create voter parity now, not eight or 12 or 16 years or more down the road. We can adopt those 25 boundaries that Toronto uses for federal and provincial elections. An OMB member who heard the boundary review appeal said this model, and I quote, would result in a fair election in 2018 and provide the basis of future elections that are fair. We know very soon, Speaker, where the NDP will land on this. Do they stand up for a fair election and effective representation, or are they going to stand with their political friends in the NDP at City Hall? Stop the talk. Members will please take their seats. Order. Start the clock. Next question. Member for Davenport. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Outside this building today, thousands and thousands of people are marching with the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, here, here. representing 83,000 teachers from across Ontario. These are educators, health experts, human rights advocates, and many of them parents and grandparents themselves. Absolutely. They're calling on this government to act in the best interests of Ontario students Bring and here. keep the modernized sexual education curriculum. They've seen firsthand how crucial it is to keeping students safe and helping them learn. And as our leader said, if you're being bullied or harassed, you're not thinking about math in the classroom. Exactly. 
Mr. Speaker, will the Premier listen to reason and keep the modernized curriculum in classes throughout the consultation this September, yes or no? Premier. Minister of Education. Minister of Education. Thank you very much, Premier and Speaker. Through you to the member opposite, I would just like to share with you that we are listening to thousands and thousands here, here. of parents here, across here. this province. Respect their right to be heard, and I am so looking forward to kicking off this comprehensive consultation here, here. that will allow every person who wants to have their voice heard to have an open thousands door to our ministry to help shape the manner in which we go forward with the health and physical education curriculum. And I have to tell you, in tandem with this, as teachers go back to the classroom, I have every confidence in their ability as they work through their classroom and get to know their students and use the curriculum that was last used in 2014. I believe in our teachers in Ontario, and I believe they will do a great job utilizing the curriculum that was last used in 2014. Restart the call. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker. It is shocking to hear the minister respond like that, as if nothing is happening out there. In what, two weeks? Students are back in the classroom. Teachers don't even actually have a clear directive exactly. to the board exactly. from this government exactly. to know what they're supposed to be teaching. And you know what? We are not that stupid as people of this province. Believe it or not, we understand that the 2014 curriculum is actually the 1998, 1998. curriculum, which was created before the students that are in classrooms right now are even born. What does what does the premier the premier what does the premier have to say to the teachers of Ontario who, unlike himself, refuse to compromise the safety and well-being of Ontario students and who will continue to keep teaching the modernized 2015 curriculum come Labor Day? Minister. Thank you very much, Speaker. And I have to share with you and remind the, the opposition party that so many people are lining up in support of us. For instance, yesterday I shared that the former Liberal House leader, John Malloy, thinks that the Liberals got it wrong. And we all know where the former deputy leader stands on this as well. And I'd just like to share with you that in the DurbanRegion.com, an actual teacher said. Premier will please come to order. The member for Waterloo will please come to order. We're in question period. Everybody has a chance to raise questions. Minister of Education can finish. We, people are lining up in support. For instance, there was a letter to the editor in the Pickering News from a teacher that said, the notion of consent refusal is not an innovation of the Wynn government or the McGinty government. Speaker, I have to tell you that people understand what we mean to teach, will come to, order. to teach their students based on 24 curriculum, and we're going to focus on supporting our teachers, giving them the tools, and ensuring that we do focus as well on the needs such as Thank you. The members will please take their seats. Start the clock. Next question. The member for Durham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Yesterday, the minister told us about our government house leader's <laughs> offer to make a home for the city of Victoria's statue of Sir John A. McDonald. This was after Victoria decided to tear it down and attempt to erase our history. While the city refused the offer, I'm glad to see our government's taking steps to preserve the monuments of those who had a hand in building our country. Can the minister tell us the government's plans to ensure that Ontarians are taught about the history of our great province and country? Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. 
Thank you uh, to the member for Durham for this important question. As I outlined yesterday, history is complicated. There are historical figures who served in this House from across the political spectrum who, frankly, their views would not be viewed very appreciatively now. We cannot let extreme political express correctness dictate what people can learn and see in our communities. Using that logic, there would not be a museum open in the province of Ontario today. Our government provides support and program funding to teach the unique and complex history that has shaped this country and province we know. The most important thing we can do to ensure that future generations learn about the contributions made by our historical figures throughout Canada's Response. history, laws and all, is to make sure people understand and learn from them. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Speaker, to the Minister for that answer. I agree that while many of our historical figures were not perfect, we must examine them through a lens that recognizes they lived in vastly different times. Sir John A. Macdonald is an important historical figure. He was also the founding father of our country. Instead of condemning his statue to collect dust in storage, people should be able to learn about his life and contributions to Canada and Ontario. Opposition will come what is our government doing to make sure that people can learn about the waves of Ontario's history? Minister. Thank you again from the member from Durham. Our government has several initiatives that allow for Ontarians to learn about figures like Sir John A. Macdonald, John Graves Simcoe and Joseph Brandt, along with many other important history, historical figures. Our ministry oversees the curation and preservation of statues and monuments throughout Ontario and a future monument honouring veterans of the war in Afghanistan that was announced by Premier Ford in June. Our ministry our ministry also operates interpretive and historic sites like throughout Ontario, like St. Marie among the Hurons in Midland and Fort Henry in Kingston, as well as, as supporting museums like the ROM down the street. We understand the important role history plays and the, the sites and statues that contribute to our history, as it's important that we understand the historic and complex part of what history Thank you. Thank you. The House will come to order. Stop the clock. Start the clock. Next question. The member for Kiwetanum. Uh, speaker, uh, this question is to the Premier. Last week, I asked the uh, Minister of Indigenous Affairs about his government, um, what his government was doing to clean up the Grassy Narrows and also Wabasamunk First Nations uh, about the mercury contamination in the river system. Um, one of the things that he said was that he, uh, that he met his, uh, with uh, senior officials and his ministry about this uh, important issue. What will the minister uh, will the minister provide the details uh, of what was discussed in his uh, with the senior staff in the in those briefings? Thank you, environment. Mr. environment, conservation, and parks. And then, uh, through you, Mr. Speaker, thank thanks the member for the question. Um, we will, uh, of course, I'm not the minister, so I will I won't be able to report specifically on those conversations. But as you would you would know, the government is committed uh, to the cleanup of the area. There's been an 85 million dollar <laughs> the, uh, the the leakage from the Dryden plant, which goes back uh, many many years, um, and the concerns about ongoing leakage are subject of what my ministry, the Ministry of Environment, is looking at currently. 85 million dollars has been set aside in a trust. Um, that is uh, in discussion now with the tripartite group, which includes both First Nations in terms of the best application of that, and I'll be pleased to continue to report to the House and to the member about the progress in that regard. Thank you. Supplementary. Again, a uh, question to the Premier. Uh, I asked the Speaker uh, because uh, Chief Rudy Turtle from Grassy Narrows indicated to me that uh, there has been no outreach uh, whatsoever since the election of this government. 
Yet, uh, yesterday uh, we learned about this government fired off an email, uh, a letter to the uh, City of Victoria Council uh, offering to take the statue of uh, Sir John A. Macdonald off, to, off uh, the city's hands in very short order uh, after the, the city decided to take down the statue. This government was quick to act for the statue <laughs> from BC, but so far hasn't demonstrated a commitment to a reconciliation with our people, First Nations people, here in Ontario. My question, Mr. Speaker, is uh, in today's era of reconciliation, which First Nation leaders did this government consult with about this matter that will affect the relationship between peoples before acting quickly on behalf of the statue? Members, yeah. <laughs> please take their seats. Members will please take their seats. Please take your seats. Response. Mr. Speaker, through, through you to the uh, to the member. As I mentioned, and as as I'm sure he knows, uh, the the English and Wagaboon Rivers uh, Remediation Trust, which was was established in 2018, um, with 85 million dollars, is a is a tripartite discussion. Um, you have my commitment term, in terms of a reach out, and and we will be obviously working both both at my level, but probably more importantly at the at the officials level in terms of conversations with the group involved. It's an important long standing issue and you have a commitment of the government that will continue to work with the First Nations involved. Thank you. Our next question, member for Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. From ripping up business contracts to forcing a human rights tribunal complaint by throwing out the modern sex ed curriculum, to a hopeless lawsuit against the federal government's plan to make polluters pay, the Premier seems to be running an employment agency for lawyers. As a matter of fact, the Premier will spend more money suing the federal government in the next few months than he supposedly will save over the next four years by undermining local democracy in Toronto. Through you, Mr. Speaker, to the Premier. Why is the Premier wasting taxpayer dollars on lawyers instead of spending it on services that benefit the people? Premier. From environment. Mr. The environment. Mr. Speaker, um, through you to the member, um, and I know I know he has a deep deep interest and understanding in this in this issue. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as as we've said before in this uh, in this house, um, we got a very clear mandate. People were very clear about the cap and trade system. They were very clear as well about about the carbon tax and what the carbon tax will mean to Ontario families. Getting rid of cap and trade will mean $260 per family per year. <laughs> Reducing gas prices by 10 cents, which is part of that program, will mean 14,000 jobs for Ontario. These are important things that Ontario families and Ontarians care about. So we repeat, we will take all of the steps necessary, including using the courts to defend Ontario's interests and defend Ontario families, defend Ontario jobs, and put money back in the pockets of Great Ontarians. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, uh, my question was about wasting money on lawyers, not necessarily about carbon taxes. But if the minister wants to talk about climate change, then I think the minister owes the people of Ontario an explanation of why they are spending $30 million to fight climate action at a time when we have spent $696 million in insurable losses due to extreme weather events in the first half of this year alone. Wow. Climate change is nature's tax on everything. Even insurance brokers understand that. So I ask again through you, Speaker, to the minister, why is the government opposite choosing to spend money on lawyers instead of solutions for the people of Ontario? Minister. M M Mr. Speaker, through you to the member, and again, I, I recognize his interest and, uh, and uh, passion about this issue. 
but we're passionate as well about not just the environment but the economy. When it comes to the environment, this government will do what's necessary, a plan that works, not a plan that sounds good, a plan that will actually make a difference for the environment, improve conservation, improve the environment, improve air quality. But when it comes to protecting taxpayers and it comes to protecting Ontarians' pocketbooks, we'll do that as well. And we'll take whatever steps are required, including the courts. We will not see the federal government overstep its bounds and tax Ontarians unfairly. We will do what it takes to stop a carbon tax in Ontario. Next question. Start the clock. Member for Burlington. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. Minister, yesterday you and the Attorney General announced the government's plan to prepare Ontario for cannabis legislation in October. I was pleased to see our government is making the safety of our children and youth our top priority. There is no question that we must have the best interest of our Ontario's children and youth top of mind, and I'm not the only one who agrees. Yesterday, the Ontario Chamber of Commerce released a statement supporting the government's commitment to develop a private retail model. The Chamber said that they, and I quote, would like to stress that safety and social responsibility must be the first and overwhelming priorities of any distribution system, unquote. Minister, I wholeheartedly agree. Minister, could you please explain Question. to this House how yesterday's announcement on cannabis retail and distribution will ensure the safety of Ontario's children and youth? Well, thank you to the member of, uh, from Burlington for the question. The member is right, Speaker. It was our responsibility to develop a retail and distribution system that protects youth and combats the illegal market, and that is exactly what we are proposing. Right. On October 17th, the Ontario Cannabis Store retail website will provide a safe, secure and reliable outlet for consumers aged 19 and over to purchase cannabis. A verification system will ensure that nobody under the age of 19 will be able to purchase cannabis. At the same time, we are beginning consultations with stakeholders across the province to determine the best and the safest way to proceed with a privatized retail system. Speaker, we will consult with municipalities, indigenous communities, law enforcement, public health officials, and business uh, to determine the best path forward. Again, our retail system will be in Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you for your thoughtful response, Minister. As I'm sure all members will agree, it's important that the requirements to legalize cannabis is met safely and responsibly. I am happy to hear this is exactly what we will be doing. Although I am confident our approach will not tolerate anybody sharing, selling, or providing cannabis to children, I am concerned about players in this illegal market continuing to target our children and youth. Minister, can you please provide more information on how the government's plan will combat the illegal market? Thank you. Minister. Thank you again for the question. As I said earlier, protecting our youth and combating illegal market are our top concerns. Currently, there is no legal way to access recreational cannabis anywhere in Canada. The illegal market speaker is driven by a small number of users. Ontario government research has previously found that 70 per cent of those users prefer a private retail model for cannabis distribution. With this in mind, the private retail model, then, is the best way to drive people away from the illegal market. By consulting with municipalities, indigenous communities, law enforcement, public health officials, uh, businesses, we will develop a plan for the private retail of cannabis, which will make the illegal cannabis market unsustainable. Make no mistake, nobody under the age of 19 will have access. Thank you. Next question, the member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Last week, I introduced a motion that would ban carding once and for all in the province. The Minister of Community Safety's reply was to say, we will not be bringing back carding. Well, of course, you can't bring back what never went away.
Carding or street checks was regulated but not banned. Est-ce que le Premier ministre peut nous garantir qu'il va ban? Could the Premier guarantee that he will eliminate the street controls, street checks? Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for that question. As we've stated in the past, public safety is of utmost concern to all of us in the province, and especially in this government. The Premier has been very clear on this matter and that we're not bringing back carding. I believe in giving our law enforcement officers the tools to get the job done, and with the announcement last week of the $25 million, I think we are moving in that direction. I'll listen to our frontline officers about the resources they need, and I'll make sure that we're working with communities to ensure that we're building trust between our police and the communities that they serve. Mr. Speaker, our government continues to be for the people and committed to enhancing and ensuring that public safety for all Ontarians is Arts. of utmost concern. Thank you. Elementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That wasn't my question, but I'll, I'll say it in English for him this time. If this one is a two-part question. Will the Premier please tell this House what to him is the difference between carding and street checks? That's the first part. The second part, and will he ban the use of carding and street checks as well as commit today to order the destruction of records obtained through street checks and carding? Minister. Again, Mr. Speaker, our message has been clear. We're not bringing back carding. Public safety is of utmost importance to us, and we'll continue working to ensure our frontline officers have the tools and resources they need, to, that they so desperately need, to do their jobs. Our government has kept its promise by taking the vital first step towards tackling the problem of gun and gang violence in the City of Toronto. We'll continue meeting with our community partners and public safety people in the coming weeks to identify what other steps we have to take. The programs, initiatives and strategies will be announced so that we can Response. ensure public safety throughout this great province. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, the member for Mississauga Centre. Merci, Monsieur le Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Attorney General, yesterday the Minister of Finance and the Attorney General said that there would be consultations to give more information to the government regarding cannabis selling in Ontario. I know that municipalities and law enforcement as well as Aboriginal communities will take part to these conversations. I am happy to learn that the government will consult them, Mr. Speaker. I was also very pleased to hear that these consultations will be asked on the, our children and youth safety, and that is why I am asking the Attorney General to tell us more how we will ensure the children and youth safety. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank the member for her question. First of all, the member is absolutely right. Our first priority in legalizing cannabis on October 17th is to make ensure our children's safety. We have a few measures that we will put in place to this effect. To buy, use, or use cannabis, Ontarians will need to be 19 years or older. There will be prevention programs that will be put in place for these uh, for our youth in stores. Products will be sold at the counter and will not be visible. Sponsoring will also be banned. Let me be clear, Mr. Speaker. Our government will never tolerate anyone offering or selling cannabis to people under 19 years old in any way. Thank you. 
I would like to thank the Attorney General for her answer, Mr. Speaker. I know that several parents in my constituency in Mississauga Centre and all over Ontario will be happy to learn that the government is taking their children's safety seriously. There is no doubt that this file has to be treated responsibly, and I know that our government is working hard to make sure that Ontario is ready for legalizing and the use of cannabis for recreative re 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 use. Mr. Speaker, I also know that several people are wondering about the impact of legalizing cannabis regarding road safety. Could the minister tell us what the government will do in order to fight to fight uh, um, driving under the use of marijuana, of marijuana? The minister, thank you. In Ontario, we've put in place laws that are even more strict regarding driving under the influence of cannabis. There will be tolerance, a zero tolerance policy with drivers. Law enforcement will have all tools and resources necessary to make sure that the Traffic Act will be enforced. Starting January 1st, Ontario will also put in place stricter sanctions for driving under the influence, including heavier penalties and installations on cars of, um, of car restrictions. Priority is ensuring that our kids are protected and our communities and our roads are safe. Thank you. Next question, the member for St. Catharines. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Safe injection sites save lives. There was over 1,200 Ontarians who overdosed last year. That's 1,200 lives that could have been saved. The Deputy Premier has already confirmed that no safe injection sites will be opened. Despite the calls for new life-saving sites in communities like St. Catharines, but this government has also left the future of existing sites up in the air. Is this government planning on shutting down all safe injection sites in this province? Premier, Minister of Community and Social Services. Mr. Children, Community and, and Social question, Services. For the question, I appreciate the opportunity to respond on behalf of the Minister of Health. Uh, let me be very clear: the supervised injection site in London, Ontario, has been extended until September the 30th, so that the site can continue its work as we review the latest data, evidence, and current models. We want to look at the evidence to make sure that the continuation of any supervised injection site will be to the benefit of the people that we are here to serve and protect and ensure they get on the right path. And we want to make sure that we benefit all of the people, that we save lives, and we help to introduce people into rehabilitation. In the coming weeks, we will also be speaking and consulting with experts and reviewing reports from organizations to ensure people struggling with addiction get the help that they need. But let me be clear, let me be crystal clear that the people on both sides of this House that represent the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario will stand for those who are fighting. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, this government talks a big game about consultation when it suits them but rides rough shots over the public input when they know they won't get the answer they are looking for. Public health experts, addiction counselors, and users have all said loud and clear, safe injection sites save lives. They are the best, I repeat, the best way to connect users with the services they need to get their lives back on track. Why won't this government heed the advice of public health and addiction experts who can provide a huge, huge body of evidence in the support of safe injection sites, including St. Catharines? Look, Speaker, 
The Minister of Health was abundantly clear yesterday that at this point in time, we are going to pause the three overdose prevention sites. If the member's office wanted to listen to the response, I'd be happy to provide it to them, but they don't want to because they have their own ideological way of doing things. They don't want to talk about evidence. They don't want to talk about research. They don't want to talk Position about consultation because they are so rigid and ideological. We are going to review the latest data, the evidence, and the current supervised injection sites and overdose prevention models. And We want to look at the evidence to make sure that the continuation of any supervised injection sites are going to benefit people, that it's going to save lives and get people back into rehabilitation. This side of the House and that side order. of the House want to make sure we lift people up, that we get them back on track, that we make them healthy again, that we deal with their mental health and addiction Fox. challenges. Unfortunately, the other side doesn't want to have that conversation. Next question. Start the clock. The member for Scarborough Rouge River. Speaker, my question today is for the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services with responsibility for immigration. Minister, I want to commend you for your input to the ad hoc federal committee on the border crisis. I want to, I want to use the word crisis with great confidence. I see it with my own eyes every night on the news, and I have read the Angus Reid polling results that say a majority of Canadians see it that way. I understand that you have once again provided the federal government with details on the $200 million bill that has resulted from federal inaction during the border crisis. I also understand that more federal ministers are being thrown at this problem, likely because they have made no progress in a year. My question is related to the committee meeting. During the crisis Russia. committee meeting, did the five federal ministers assigned to this crisis provide you with any confidence that an end to this crisis is near? Mr. Children, Community and Social Services. Thanks very much for the question. It was very clear yesterday and for the last two months that we are dealing with a crisis at the border, particularly in Quebec, but also to a lesser extent in the province of Manitoba. I am heartened that uh, all uh, provincial premiers joined our Premier Minister F Premier Ford in saying that for any uh, any strain that we're feeling in the provinces as a result of this crisis, that the federal government should compensate us for. Unfortunately, yesterday when I attended the ad hoc meeting, uh, not only did we have five uh, men ministers on that call, but it was really just about musical chairs more than getting any actual results of what's happening at the border. I am pleased to say that uh, Quebec joined on with us yesterday in calling for additional compensation. This is rapidly becoming Coming a half a billion dollar crisis in the in the province of Ontario and the province of Quebec as a result of our social assistance costs, education costs, temporary shelter costs, Red Cross costs, Spons. as well as legal aid costs. So I will uh, speak more in the supplementary, but let me be perfectly clear: we on this side of the house stand with all of those Ontarians, Canadians, 67% who agree with us. Supplementary. Thank you very much for the answer, Minister. I am shocked that this crisis has been boiling for a year, and just now the federal ministers have figured out they have a real problem on their hands. And thank you for continuing to press this issue. I, like you, think it's a good news that Minister Hussein has been removed from the committee. Hopefully, Ministers Blair and LeBlanc can bring solution instead of rhetoric and name-calling. I have a supplemental question for the minister, again focused on immigration. While the crisis at the border continues, federal inaction increases the wait time for refugee claimants. I read that it takes two years to process claims. It, that should take two months. This leads me to believe that the crisis at the border with illegal border crossers is creating a crisis at the immigration and refugee board. Minister, does the flood of illegal border crossers cause a crisis at the immigration and refugee board? And does that Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Response, Minister. 
Thanks uh, very much, Speaker. Of course, we do have a crisis at the border. It has cost our Ontario taxpayers $200 million and growing, $90 million in social assistance costs alone, $74 million in uh, shelter accommodations in the City of Toronto alone and growing, uh, $12 million in growing in the City of Ottawa, as well as $3 million to the Red Cross, in addition to ch uh, children's aids and legal aid support that uh, we're requiring. I am happy to, uh, to report that the federal government has removed the federal immigration minister from this so we can have a more positive step forward working with Ministers Blair and LeBlanc, who have both reached out to me right away. But let me be perfectly clear. Federal inaction has caused delays and a strain on resources and decisions related to legal immigration. And I would just like to point out that we are a wel welcoming and open society here in Ontario, and I'm proud that my ministry contributes $110 million in settlement funding for programs like language training. Response. In addition, yesterday I offered uh, to encourage the federal government to provide us with 1,000 more economic immigrants than we normally have. Used to be 6,600, now 7,600. Next question, the member for Comiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Forbes published an article on the impact of this government's wrong-headed decision to dismantle cap and trade. And this is Forbes, not Ontario PC News Now, paid for by the PC taxpayer. <laughs> Forbes said, and I quote, by backsliding on climate, I could give you a half thumb, Lisa. By backsliding on climate, Ontario may have just cost businesses billions, added millions in consumer costs, eschewed thousands of jobs, and muddied its investment outlook. Why is the Premier risking the health of our economy to stick to his radical climate change denying ideology? Senior. Environment, Conservation and Parks. Mr. Speaker, it is, it is something to hear, hear our colleagues across uh, quoting, quoting Forbes magazine, but, but, uh, but, um, I, but that is uh, but, but, but good, good reading. We've, we have, uh, we've been clear, even the Auditor General was clear. Let's go back to that. The Auditor General was clear that cap and trade was going to cost eight billion dollars. Eight billion dollars from Ontario families and have a minimal impact, a minimal impact in terms of affecting GHG emissions. This is a government that is committed to making a difference when it comes to climate, and we understand the problem. But we're not going to do that with an ineffective system, uh, regardless of what Forbes magazine says. Uh, we're going to listen to the people of Ontario. We're going to listen to the voters who gave us a mandate to come here to make sure we have a solid environmental policy that makes a difference for this environment, but that also protects Ontario families and puts, in this case, $260 back in their pocket every year. Thank you. Supplementary. These Forbes publishes real news. Cancelling cap and trade in the way this government decided to go about it has left Ontario vulnerable to multi-million dollar lawsuits, every cent of which taxpayers will be on the hook for. This government decided to waste more money by spending $30 million to challenge the federal government in court. Again, it will be taxpayers picking up the tab, and after all those wasted millions, Ontario will be no closer to cleaner air, cleaner water than we are today. In fact, we will be worse off, losing thousands of green economy jobs and undermining investor confidence. So I ask you, why is this government climate changing, denying ideology more important than the health of our economy and our environment? Thank you. Will take your seat. Mr. Mr. Speaker, again, hearing the NDP standing up for big business, standing up for the big oil companies, uh, when they talk about dismantling the cap and trade program, they talk about $4 billion. Remember when we heard about that, Mr. Speaker? $4 billion of cost. But when we looked at it in a business like way, that included free credits. Would you like us to be paying free, for free credits? Would you like us to be paying the big oil companies for the credits they had? Would you like us to be paying polluters for the pollution they've had? No. We've taken an approach Mr. Will come Speaker, to that makes sense, an approach that minimizes the effect on taxpayers, gets rid of an inefficient cap-and-trade program, and puts the environment at the front of an agenda, but lets the, lets the economy also prosper, lets Ontario families also prosper. The era of the carbon tax is over, and no, we won't be pandering to big business. Stop the clock. Start the clock. Next question. The member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
My question is for the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. On Saturday, there was a daylight shooting in my riding of Don Valley North here in Greater Toronto area. The Toronto Police Service reported that multiple shots were heard, vehicles were damaged, and shell casing were found in the area. In this violent incident, two people were shot and are currently being treated for their injuries. Mr. Speaker, my question is, what is our government doing to address this senseless violence in my riding of Don Valley North? Thank you. Minister of Community Safety, Correctional Services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Don Valley North for the question. As I've stated previously, public safety is of paramount importance to our government. Speaker, today, there are too many people and too many neighbourhoods that continue living in fear due to the threats imposed by guns and gang violence. Mr. Speaker, the time for talk is over. Our government is listening to our frontline officers and is investing real money to help them make, keep the community safe from guns and gang violence. Our government for the people is committed to keeping Ontario's community safe, and the $25 million we are investing in our police services will ensure that we get to the root causes of gun and gang violence in this great province. We are now calling upon the municipal and federal governments to also step up Bonds. and be part of the solution. Here, 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 here. Wow. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the Minister for his detailed response. I, along with the residents of Don Valley North, condemn this brazen and indiscriminate act of senseless gun violence. We know that we live in a safe community and that the criminals who committed this violence acts will be punished. I know the minister will continue his hard work in tracking gun and gang violence in my writing of Don Valley notes and throughout this great <coughs> province. Mr. Speaker, can the minister please elaborate on the measures our government will take against the people who try to make our communities unsafe? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> minister. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and once again, uh, thank you to the member of Don Valley North for the question. Mr. Speaker, our government remains committed to providing our brave frontline officers with the tools and resources they need to get the job done. Our recent announcement of the $25 million in new funding will provide our police with cutting-edge digital, investigative and analytical tools that our police need to fight gun and gang violence in 2018. Mr. Speaker, we are committed to taking a whole-of-government approach, however, to tackling gun violence in Ontario. I will continue to meet with community safety partners over the coming weeks, as well as my colleagues from the Ministries of Health, Children, Community and Social Services, as well as the Attorney General, so that we can address the root causes of gun and gang violence within this great province. Mr. Speaker, solving guns and gang violence involves more Spons. than just enforcement. Our government is committed to finding real solutions to keep our communities safe. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the time we have this morning for question period. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Kiwetnong has given notice of his dissatisfaction with the answer to his question given by the Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks concerning mercury contamination in grassy narrows. And pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Brampton North has given notice of his dissatisfaction with the answer to his question given by the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services concerning carding and street checks both of these matters will be debated today at 6 p.m. It is now time to say a word about our legislative pages. These fine young people are indispensable to the effective functioning of this chamber. They cheerfully and efficiently deliver notes. <laughs> You're trying to cut the 
speaker off, I've got more to say. <laughs> they cheerfully and efficiently deliver notes, run errands, transport important documents throughout the precinct, and make sure our water glasses are always full. We are indeed fortunate to have them here. Our pages are smart, trustworthy, and hardworking, and they depart having many, made many new friends with a greater understanding of parliamentary democracy and memories that will last a lifetime. Each of them will go home and carry on, continue their studies, and no doubt contribute greatly to their communities, their province, and their country. We expect great things from all of them. Maybe some of them will someday take their seats in this House as members or work here as staff. We wish them well. This group of pages has given up their summer holidays on short notice to help us in this special summer session. Please join me in showing our appreciation for this group. As members know, this House has sat since July the 11th in a special summer session. For the past six consecutive weeks, we have met to discuss and debate some of the important issues facing the province. While I obviously want to thank members for their participation in this sitting, I think it's quite appropriate that we all extend our sin sincere appreciation to the staff of this Legislature. Yeah. There are hundreds. There are hundreds of people who work here, not including the members. The hard work and dedication of our staff are not always recognized or publicly acknowledged. But without their efforts, this House would not be safe, it would not be clean, and it would not be maintained. Our words in the chamber would not be recorded. Our proceedings would not be broadcast. Our standing orders, parliamentary traditions and conventions could not be upheld. Our standing committees could not function. Our finances would not be managed. Our library would be closed. Our visitors would not be greeted. Our IT would soon shut down. In short, this place would soon cease to function, and the light of parliamentary democracy in this province would soon flicker and wane. On behalf of the House, I want to express my sincere thanks to all the staff of the Legislature, many of whom who put their holiday plans on hold for the exemplary public service that they have performed this summer to the benefit of the people of Ontario. Yeah. We have a deferred vote on the amendment to Government Notice of Motion No. 4 relating to allocation of time on Bill 5, an act to amend the City of Toronto Act 2006, the Municipal Act 2001, and the Municipal Elections Act 1996. Call in the members. This is a five-minute bell.
I would ask the members to please take their seats. On August 9, 2018, Mr. Bissau moved that Government Notice of Motion No. 4 be amended by deleting everything after ordered in the first paragraph and replacing with to the Standing Committee on General Government and that the Standing Committee on General Government be authorized to meet on Monday, August 20, 2018, from 2 to 8 p.m. and Wednesday, August 22, from 2 to 8 p.m. for the purpose of public hearings on the bill and that the Clerk of the Committee, in consultation with the Committee Chair, be authorized to arrange the following with regard to Bill 5. Notice of public hearings on the Ontario Parliamentary Channel, the Legislative Assembly's website, and Canada's Newswire, and that the deadline for requests appear to be 6 p.m. on Wednesday, August 15, 2018, and that the witnesses be scheduled to appear before the Committee on a first-come, first-served basis, and that each witness will receive up to nine minutes for their presentation, followed by six minutes for questions from the committee members divided equally amongst the recognized parties, that the deadline for written submissions be 8 p.m. on Wednesday, August 22, 2018, and that the deadline for filing amendments to the bill with the clerk of the committee shall be 9 a.m. on Monday, August 27, 2018, and that the committee be authorized to meet on Wednesday, August 29, 2018, from 9 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. and 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. for the purpose of clause-by-clause -clause consideration of the bill, and that on Wednesday, August 29, 2018, at 5.30 p.m., those amendments which have not yet been moved shall be deemed to have been moved, and the chair of the committee shall interrupt the proceedings and shall, without further debate or amendment, put every question necessary to dispose of all the remaining sections of the bill and any amendments thereto. At this time, the chair shall allow one 20-minute waiting period pursuant to Standing Order 129A, and the committee shall report to the House, report the bill to the House, no later than Thursday, August 30, 2018. In the event that the committee fails to report the bill on that day, the bill shall be deemed to be passed by the committee and shall be deemed to be reported to and received by the House. And that upon receiving the report of the Standing Committee on General Government, the Speaker shall put the question for adoption of the report forthwith, and that at such time the bill shall be ordered for third reading, which order may be called that same day. And that when the order for third reading of the bill is called, one hour of debate shall be allotted to the third reading stage of the bill, with 30 minutes apportioned to the government, 20 minutes to the official opposition, seven minutes to the independent Liberal Party members, and three minutes to the independent Green Party member. At the end of this time, the Speaker shall interrupt the proceedings and shall put every question necessary to dispose of this stage of the bill without further debate or amendment, and that except in the case of a recorded division arising from the morning orders of the day, pursuant to Standing Order 9C, no deferral of the second reading or third reading of the bill shall be permitted, and that in the case of any division relating to any proceedings on the bill, the division bell shall be limited to five minutes except that the division bell for the vote on the motion for third reading shall be 15 minutes. All those in favour of Monsieur Bisson's motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Monsieur Bisson. Monsieur Bisson. Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Mr. Tab. Mr. Tab. Ms. Singh Brampton Centre. Ms. Singh Brampton Centre. Mr. Van Toff. Mr. Van Toff. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Shamanta. Shamanta. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Bourguin. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rakosovic. Mr. Rakosovic. Mr. Harden. Mr. Harden. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Ms. Monteith Farrell. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Madame de Rosier. Oh, Madame de Rosier. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Oh, my. All those opposed to the motion will please rise now one at a time and be counted by the clerk.
Mr. Smith, Bay of Quinty. Mr. Smith, Bay of Quinty. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Bethlehem Falls. Mr. Bethlehem Falls. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Ms. Mulrooney. Ms. Mulrooney. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Tibble. Mr. Tibble. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Pettipe. Mr. Pettipe. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Miller, Perry, Hamilton, East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller, Perry, Mr. Miller, Perry, Mr. Miller, Perry, Mr. Miller, Perry, Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Calandra. Ms. Surma. Ms. Surma. Mr. Parson. Mr. Parson. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Ostra. Mr. Osterhoff. Ms. Midas. Ms. Midas. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Tangri. Mrs. Tangri. Ms. Samari. Ms. Samari. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Quartha. Mr. Smith, Peterborough Quartha. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Kanapath. Mr. Kanapath. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Bauman. Mr. Bauman. Mr. Anand. Mr. Anand. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Tani Gasol. Mr. Tani Gasol. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Babber. Mr. Babber. Mr. Sabau. Mr. Sabau. The ayes are 36, the nays are 69. The ayes being 36 and the nays being 69, I declare the motion lost. We now move to the main motion, the vote on the main motion. Mr. Smith, Bay of Quinty, has moved government notice of motion number four relating to the allocation of time on Bill 5, an act to amend the City of Toronto Act 2006, the Municipal Act 2001, and the Municipal Elections Act 1996. Is it the pleasure of the House that the motion carry? No! I heard some no's. All those in favour of the motion will please say aye. Aye! All those opposed will please say nay. Nay! In my opinion, the ayes have it. Call in the members. This will be another five minutes up. Same vote reversed? No. We have to continue with the vote.
Members will please take their seats. Everybody in their seat. Okay. Mr. Smith, Bay of Quinty, has moved government notice of motion number four relating to allocation of time on Bill 5, an act to amend the City of Toronto Act 2006, the Municipal Act 2001, and the Municipal Elections Act 96, 1996. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, Mr. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Bethlen Mr. Mr. Bethlen Mr. Mr. Fidelli, Mr. Fidelli, Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Mulrooney, Mr. Mulrooney, Mr. McLeod, Mr. McLeod, Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark, Mr. Yakubuski, Yakubuski, Mr. Hardiman, Mr. Hardiman, Mr. Tabola, Mr. Tabola, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Pettipe, Mr. Pettipe, Mrs. Marteau, Mrs. Marteau, Mr. McDonnell, Mr. McDonnell, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, Mr. McNaught, Mr. McNaught, Ms. Fullerton, Ms. Fullerton, Ms. Scott, Ms. Scott, Ms. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Yurek. Mr. Yurek. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Lecce. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Key. Mr. Key. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Calandra. Ms. Surma. Ms. Surma. Mr. Parsa. Mr. Parsa. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Ms. Midas. Ms. Midas. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Karahalios. Mrs. Karahalios. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Tang. Mrs. Tang. Mr. Samar. Mr. Samar. Mr. Sandy. Mr. Sandy. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Smith. Peterborough Quartha. Mr. Smith. Peterborough Quartha. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Babikian. Mr. Babikian. Mr. Bauma. Mr. Bauma. Mr. Anon. Mr. Anon. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Tanigas. Mr. Tanigas. Mr. Robert. Mr. Robert. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Cusetto. Mr. Babber. Mr. Babber. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be Mr. counted by the clerk. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Madame Jelen. Madame Jelen. Mr. Tab. Mr. Tab. Ms. Singh Brampton Centre. Ms. Singh Brampton Centre. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Ms. Hogar. Ms. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Ms. 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 Fife. Ms. Fife. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Mr. Mamako. Mr. Mamako. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Mr. Monta. Mr. Monta. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Burns McGowan. Mr. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Monsieur Bourguin. Monsieur Bourguin. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rokosovic. Mr. Rokosovic. Mr. Hardy. Mr. Hardy. Ms. Monty Farrell. Ms. Monty Farrell. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Madame de Rosier. Madame de Rosier. Mr. Shrine. Mr. Shrine. The ayes are 70, the nays are 38. The ayes being 70 and the nays being 38, I declare the motion carried. This House stands in recess until 1 p.m.